Welcome everyone, and welcome to the Dummy Show, Corbett Ed's Garage. I'm Axel, I'm the star of the show. Now if y'all remember, the Dummy had to go back to the future to save his car, because Dummy 2, his kid, Rex, oh, he's a little preoccupied at the moment. Oh, uh, I'm going to go ahead and run the show for you. I don't think he's going to be back soon. I don't care if he comes back at all. You don't need Dummy to run the show. Anyway, welcome. The House of Fast Cars. Fast Bikes. And my favorite, Vicious Dogs. <laughs> In this episode, we're going to cover some old news that the dummy should took care of on the last episode. Then, we're going to go ahead and move on to the installation of the Unicorn. At that point, we're probably going to stop it right there because the dummy can't think ahead. So, he's got too much on his mind. Oh wait, what's that? What's that? I think the dummy's coming back. Welcome home, dummy. Thanks, Doctor Strange. I, I appreciate the lift. Nice guy. Anyway, I, I'm I'm sure glad to be back in 2023. That uh, future jumping, that ain't for me. I hope I don't have to do that again. Now, I was able to go back into the future and save my car. And before I left, there was not one scratch on that car. And, oh yeah, the kid's okay too. Anyway, um, the problem was is I had to jump into three other futures after that because that kid decides to take to steal the, the Corvette from his dad and takes it out for a joyride. Well, you know what? In that future, they don't drive cars like we drive. So he gets about a block down the street and he wrecks right into a house, totals the Corvette. Well, I was able to stop that and I had a real hard to hard talk with that kid. And I got, I, I, he ain't gonna do that no more. And I'll tell you what, he's gonna respect his dad after this too. And anyway, I did turn around and slapped his dad for, for being such a wuss. Uh, but I'm, I'm back, I'm ready to jump on the, ins uh, the intercooler installation, so let's get started. Wait a minute. This is not my garage. Dr. Strange? Dr. Strange? Can you come back and pick me up, please? You dropped me off at somebody else's garage. All the fun pushed off to the side. I, I just having uh, uh, a good time. Uh, let's let's get down to uh, uh, some serious business now. I'm going to tell you this time around, this was not an easy task. Everything was going smoothly up until I got the point to where I started having issues with the belt, and it everything just turned for the worse. Anyway, let's go ahead and cover some old news. <laughs> The last we left off, we got the supercharger installed and we bolted it up along with the alternator. So let me show you what entails in bolting up this supercharger, which is basically pretty simple. You have, you have four bolts here, there and there. Basically that's all it entails to uh, get the supercharger uh, bolt mounted up. Now the alternator, a little bit different here. And you only got two bolts here. One long bolt uh, that goes into the bracket, then you got another bolt here, and this one's really extra long. Oh, 
Holy shamo. And this one here is, is pretty long. This one here starts on this end, through the bracket, into the cylinder block. So that one's like a seven inch bolt, and this one here is like a four inch bolt. The spacers seem like they're pretty spot on, because uh, the belt's gonna come through here. I can see that it's uh, pretty much lined up. So that's all really it takes to install the supercharger. I didn't show you this last time because I was just too excited about getting it on. But now I'm showing it to you. Like I said, it's simple. It doesn't take a rocket scientist to put it on. Of course, the bracket's got to be right. So thanks, thank, yeah, thank you, Pro Charger, for providing me a bracket that was spot on. Go ahead. Make my day. Now, I was struggling with the uh, air cleaner clamp because it's so far up into that supercharger that I'm, I'm really worried about uh, scratching up that supercharger every time I take that air filter on and off. And my original idea uh, didn't work because of the interfering. And one other thing I didn't show you was the installation of the air filter, which is not that big of a deal, but this clamp has got to be in a, in, a, in a position to where you're able to access it at any given time. So other than that, it was it was simple. It's just too high and you can't even access it. I could probably lower it down. I might even eventually lower it on the bottom here to not expose that screw in the future. Now, the wiring harness for the alternator. Being that uh, it's a aftermarket alternator, it was a different type of plug-in. Now, I could have made a harness for it, you know, and the Pro Charger kit did uh, uh, supply uh, wiring to do that. But in today's world, you just get on eBay or Amazon and just order the harness that you need. So this is the wiring harness that I picked up for the CS130 alternator. A uh, CS130 alternator requires a plug of this type and of course this here plugs into my stock wiring harness so anyway it didn't really come with enough loom so let me go ahead and add some tape on the end here so this doesn't slide up and down and there's the finished product a little electrical tape don't have to worry about that sliding we're good If you've been following along, you know that the alternator that I have for the Corvette is not the stock alternator. I had to buy a CS130 type alternator, which is in the 1986 and up uh, Corvette. It's a smaller diameter alternator. There's a couple of reasons why I went with the aftermarket alternator. One, it was a 160 amp alternator, which is I'm gonna need to charge up that uh, MSD electronic ignition as well as other stuff that I got going on. I wanted the chrome uh, alternator to kind of go with the theme of the flow of the engine. Now, before anything, I need to disconnect that battery. With my luck, I'm going to get electrocuted working with this wiring. Now, with the battery disconnected, I want to uh, extend the hot wire so, so it can reach the back of the alternator. Now with the hot wire completed, it's time to plug everything in. As you can see, the uh, white plug is where the old harness plugs it and plugging into. Uh, and then it's going up to the new harness to the back of the alternator. Um, pretty simple thing. And I probably I will go over this later with some electrical tape. So I don't really like that red showing, but as you can see there, our, the cable the harness is going underneath the alternator. Now the pose. At this point, I'm pretty excited. I, I, I'm getting ready to put all the pulleys on and get that belt on. That excitement ended when I got to the belt part. So we pretty much got uh, everything that we're gonna put on at this stage on. Uh, so it's time to move on to the belt. So I need to put that uh, water pump pulley back on, pretty simple. 
all four bolts and uh, you're done torque them down you're done now we're gonna go ahead and uh, straddle that uh, belt tensioner back on uh, one bolt there's a dowel pin and uh, just make sure you line up the dowel pin on the uh, housing and torque that down to 60 to 65 uh, foot-pounds per torque now we're down to the last pulley which is the supercharger pulley uh, one bolt holds that puppy in and uh, just torque it down and we're ready to move on to the belt installation. Unfortunately, we had some issues with the belt. The uh, belt that I had was incorrect and um, no superchargers are the same or no project is the same. So things are always going to be changing. But we did damage the supercharger bracket unfortunately and I'll talk about how I ended up fixing it because the real fix would have to be pulling that uh, bracket off and sand it down and buff it out to uh, eliminate the scratches. We'll talk on that in a minute. At this point is where I started having problems. It was time to start putting all the pulleys back on. I did all that and you know what? In the heat of the moment, I was just excited to get to this point and I wasn't paying any attention and it turned out the belt that was provided in the kit was the wrong size. And in the process of trying to uh, get that belt on, uh, the idler pulley bolt scratched up my beautiful uh, polished bracket. But that, that, that pissed me off. As I said, uh, I had some problems with the belt, and where I had problems was when I tried to uh, install the idler pulley, pulley on the uh, supercharger bracket. Um, I found that the belt was not. Uh, long enough. Unfortunately, um, trying to do that, I wasn't paying any attention and ended up scratching up the beautiful polished bracket that I have on there. Anyway, now with the help of a friend down south over in LA, he uh, gave me an idea of what belt worked for him and what belt didn't work for him. And what belt work that didn't work for him worked for me. Go figure. How, how does that, something like that happen? Anyway, that standalone 85. So how did I fix my scratches that I created on the bracket? Well, there's only really one way to, to fix that and camouflage it. So I ended up putting a sticker that was in the Pro Charger kit, yeah, no EA5 sticker, worked out perfect. So after all the fighting, cussing, and swearing, uh, and crying um, over the uh, supercharger bracket, uh, it was time to move on to go ahead and uh, re-attach uh, the AC evaporator. Now, I read in the instructions that there's possibility I might have to relocate the uh, AC evaporator with some spacers. And I'm thinking that's because of the tubes, uh, the tubing for the supercharger. I'm not there yet, so I'm just going to go ahead and uh, fasten this down for now. And most of the, uh, in most of the instructions, I found it always says you might have to, or yeah. So we'll just leave it at that and finish this part up. Well, now that uh, the bell got put on, attached the uh, uh, AC evaporator, it was time to move on to the interfering. I already had test fitted this interfering once before, but I didn't do it with the supercharger on. I didn't seem, didn't recall running into any problems then, but again, I ran into another problem. Now the interfering that uh, was provided with the kit, you know, things just started uh, going backwards. compared to uh, most of the process. Uh, everything was smoothly up until I, I ran into the belt issue and then I started trailing backwards for whatever reason that may be. But the interfering for the most part lined up with the existing stock holes of the, uh, of the fairing. Um, but uh, it, there was a problem. The interfering was interfering with the upper control arm. 
So I had somehow to move that uh, interfering more towards the right-hand side. I am a god, you dull creature, and I will not be bullied by that. So it would uh, would interfere with the upper control arm. I mean, I I tested it out, and yeah, it's, I, I I raised that wheel up, and it's definitely uh, going to interfere. So finally, uh, I moved it over as far to the right as I could, and uh, have it had to redrill. Uh, the the uh, interfering in order to um, line up with the existing stock holes, but uh, with all the struggles, it still came out good, uh, regardless. And it's just a matter of getting her done. Now with the interfering out of the way. Uh, it was time to move on to the intercooler. You know, the, in, the interfering was not that big of a deal, but uh, so I thought I was just gonna smooth through the intercooler part. Well, no, that didn't happen either. We had more problems. Now that we've gotten all the little stuff out of the way, which should have been done uh, prior to getting to this point, it's time to move on and install the uh, intercooler and uh, get ready to uh, to do that, I, I'm taking the top uh, radiator cover off just so I can get a better picture of what's going on and also I'm going to be disassembly, the air dam assembly. Man, you gotta love Corvette. They, they put bolts and brackets where you least expect it. Um, here's a bracket that's uh, on the side there that uh, is part of the upper air dam assembly. And of course, it's got to be one on the opposite side. Thanks, Corvette. We're also going to go down below and remove the bottom portion of the air dam uh, assembly. With that off, the only thing left is the uh, auxiliary fan. At this point, I'm scratching my head because I'm kind of wondering how all this is going to fit. The fan's supposed to go in between the radiator and the intercooler. It's not going to fit. What's that? You need another four inches. Now with the air dam assembly and the bottom spoilers removed, we've cleared the path. Nothing like cleaning up the old work area and make things go smoothly. Well, I thought they were gonna go smoothly. Let's move on. And there you go. You wouldn't think that all these parts came out of that compact hole from the front end of that car. Amazing. I can't tell you how many screws was holding this shit together. I mean, screws everywhere. Oh man, they, they kill you in screws. Thanks, GM. Now we're getting closer to installing the intercooler. But there was a problem. Of course, another problem. When I looked at the air scoop that attaches to the intercooler, there was no pre-drill holes. What the F is all that about? Now at this point in the game, I'm starting to get excited. Moving on to the intercooler. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're gonna see some serious shit. Now on this part, my lips are not gonna match because I decided to go ahead and do a voiceover instead. So now we're ready to move on to the inter intercooler installation. Um, as you can see, there's the intercooler and right next to it uh, on my right hand side is the intercooler air dam. Well, if you look closely on the intercooler air dam, there are no pre-drilled holes. So I found that kind of odd and you know, I'm pretty much, you, you want to cover the core of the intercooler, uh, but I didn't want to screw this up and drill too many holes. So I contacted Chris over at the Supercharger uh, store and he got the ball rolling, uh, sending emails to Procharger. In the meantime, um, I was uh, looking on the net and it's really kind of hard to uh, find good example, good photo examples of something like this because I know Procharger has been uh, around since 1994 so we really didn't have, we weren't really that much into the internet because I believe the internet started coming around in the late 80s but um, and regardless uh, I was able to find some photos on the uh, Supercharger or on the um, Corvette forum and very very little at that so I called the dogs off. and just got ready to go ahead and start uh, making my own, drilling my own holes. Mm -hmm. 
Now with all the technical stuff out of the way, it was time to go ahead and uh, drill the air scoop for uh, new holes. Uh, now I was sure, I, I measured and I measured and I measured. I did not want to have to drill more than one hole on each side. So um, always good to measure more than once to make sure that you're absolutely correct on where you're going with it. Now, the moment of truth. Time to get that intercooler mocked up and see what's really going on in there. And, you know, for the most part, other than the intercooler being a heavy ass brick, trying to get it up there by myself, uh, everything seemed to be going smooth, but it, it wasn't. I ran into another problem. Now it's time to install the intercooler bracket. Now the intercooler bracket, uh, they actually bolt on to the hood hinges. So it kind of gives you an idea how detailed this kit is for the Corvette. Uh, Procharger did do their homework on this. Well now uh, we're ready to mock up the intercooler. I like to mock things up first before I actually install it to see how uh, things go but it, as you can see here it's kind of tough the intercooler is not that light but uh, I'm still able to do it but my concern here is how the hell am I going to get that fan in between the intercooler and the condenser or as far as the instructions are concerned it's the, inter the fan is supposed to go in between the intercooler and the radiator while Honestly, I just don't know how that's going to work out unless uh, there's, you know, they left the part out about not having AC and no uh, condenser. It's just not going to work from what I'm eyeing here. I'm kind of frustrated at this point. Now here I am uh, preparing the auxiliary fan to mount up to the top uh, air dam assembly uh, that Procharger provides. Um, if I didn't mention it, we're not uh, putting back to stock air dam assembly. Procharger provided uh, uh, their assembly uh, with the kit that I bought. But anyway, we're just going to go ahead and bypass this part of uh, the process. However, if for you four uh, C4 guys out there, if you would want to see the process, then just leave a, uh, a comment uh, and I'll incorporate it into the next video. Ned? This whole time, I'm thinking that there was something wrong with the kit. Charge, pro charger made a mistake, you know, but you know what? It turned out it was all on me, and I had a revelation. At this point, I got the radiator cover back on, and then I started thinking, you know, I have a three-row radiator versus the one-row radiator I had in there, so this three-row is a lot uh, larger in width. I, I don't recall, but it might have pushed that condenser forward up a little bit. I didn't think that it was going to be that big of a deal, but I tried uh, readjusting the cover to try to uh, set the condenser back a little, but that was no help either. I guess it is possible that that radiator just uh, shoved that condenser up too far. So now I'm faced with another dilemma. Oh boy, another problem. Unfortunately, at this point, I'm at a stalemate. There's really not much more I can do. Uh, the, I, I, just by eyeing everything, I can tell you right now that forward fan, that auxiliary fan, is not going to fit in between the radi radiator and the um, 
intercooler. So um, I'm going to have to kind of stop it here and come up with a different plan. And I do have some ideas in my head, and we'll uh, we'll 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 push those ideas out on the next video. Greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world he didn't exist. Well, guys, uh, unfortunately, that's about all I can do at this point. There's a couple things that I could do that I don't know that would work, uh, and that's remodifying the uh, bushings that are in between the, uh, the radiator and the AC condenser. I don't know if I want to do that. But I do have some several ideas brewing in my head. I think that uh, I, I already know what route I'm going to go with this. The kit, there's nothing wrong with the kit. I mean, it is for a stock Corvette C4. Um, Procharger did their homework. They're spot on on pretty much everything. Little bumps and bruises along the way, but uh, this this episode, this was this is all on me. You know, I, I got to have the best of the best when it, when, it, when it comes to my Corvette. So. Anyway, uh, thanks guys. I mean, thanks for watching and thanks for uh, uh, liking the video, uh, sharing, comment, uh, subscribe, all that good stuff. And we will catch you on another episode of Corvette Ed's Garage.